Update, am I the butthole for telling my parents they only have one daughter and she is six feet in the ground? So it's been around a month since I posted the original post. Thanks to everyone that gave their input. So after the post, I wrote out a very long letter explaining my feeling about how my parents treated me and how they abandoned me for seven years. I talked about all the major events that they missed and all the years that I could have been with my sister but couldn't do to their decision. That I haven't been part of the family ever since Abby got sick all those years ago. I talked about how my grandparents are more parents to me than they have been in these past years. That no matter the reason they discarded me and acted as if their other kid didn't need their parents. That you may have lost Abby recently but I lost my whole family a long time ago. And that I'm not going to give an empty apology for what I said on the phone. I sent this letter and it was radio silent for a bit, and in the meantime, I went to my first on-campus college semester and started to use the free therapy. My parents contacted me and asked if I would like to get dinner and to hear them out. I agreed. It was a very long conversation that boiled down to I'm willing to try to get to know my parents again under two conditions and if they don't agree with them I'm going to walk away since they are basically strangers at this point. One that we start to go to family therapy. Two that they don't try to parent me. That position is for my grandparents only and I am willing to try a relationship with them but it won't be a parent-child relationship. They don't seem happy with these conditions but accept it. We went to our first family session a few days ago and our relationship is still rocky but I think it is getting better. I may be able to forgive them someday but that day far in the future. I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you are doing what you believe is best for you. Despite everything you sense to have grown into a great person. Good luck love. Indeed, original poster has grown into a good and mature adult because of her own innate personality and her grandparents' care. A lot of people would have fallen under the weight of their parents' abandonment, the mortality of their sibling and other issues that crops up for most teenagers, or have turned into a spiteful person. However, original poster is making peace with everything, and settling strong and reasonable boundaries with her egg and sperm donors. So glad to hear it original poster. It is indeed amazing and refreshing how original poster managed the situation. Thank you original poster for the update, I remember your first post and it really broke my heart. I can't imagine what thought process your parents had to make the decisions they made, so much hurt and pain they didn't even realize they inflicted on you. Still you heard them out and are willing to have a relationship with them, with clear set boundaries and expectations. Your grandparents really did a great job in raising you, and you are amazing all around. I hope you are able to make peace with this situation, and have whatever the best outcome is for you. Sending love. Likely the parents didn't intend for things to get that bad. It sounds like it started reasonably and practically with going to the grandparents for major medical appointments. That makes a lot of sense. It can be emotionally difficult to see siblings in the hospital or anyone hooked up to IVs and monitors. Especially for little kids. If the condition got worse they might have dropped her off more often to help deal with days where her sister's condition was exceptionally bad. You always get good days and bad days with illnesses. Again it seems reasonable. The thing is because there likely wasn't any obvious downside so they just wound up leaving her there. In their minds, it both lightens the mental load slash strain and avoids having to have original poster see her sister go through those moments of pain and handing the emotional weight of caretaking for someone else. On the surface, it seems like a great idea to spare a kid possible memories of that. As for missed events I can see it being a case of what's one little soccer match missed when we're exhausted on repeat. They probably also didn't realize she was going through major milestones because they didn't have the mental capacity to think about this critically. They might have also consciously chosen to not be there because they felt they couldn't be the enthusiastic parent she was looking for with the mental strain they were under and felt showing up half-assing would be a bigger letdown slash harder than just not showing up. I think you are right, there is always three sides to any story, mine, yours, and what actually happened. They probably did the best they could with what they had at the moment, hopefully they'll get their daughter back and have a long happy relationship together. I'm so glad you have set boundaries but also opened a door. People are complicated, and especially with a critically ill child, humans don't always make good decisions. You are so lucky to have your grandparents. They seem to have raised you right. Reddit seems quick to advise walking away from tough situations and never looking back. I'm happy you are not walking that path. It may be the best slash only course of action in certain situations, but you seem to have the strength, skills, 
and support to see if there is anything left between you and your parents. I am so proud of original poster for going and having that conversation. If it all goes to crap in the future, original poster knows that they did everything in their power to make the relationship work. Exactly this. Stubbornness has caused so many rifts that people come to regret after it's too late. Despite everything, it's still you. Was that an Undertale reference? You're damn right it is. I love Undertale, heart. I agree. I'm glad to hear this update, since it seems like original poster has approached it in the best way they can. I hope the family therapy goes well, and even if original poster doesn't need more parents, I hope they can still get a solid, supportive relationship out of it. Book Recommendation Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents It's not a replacement for therapy but can help in recovery of the loss of the parental relationship. Yes, I can recommend this book as well. My psychologist and I read it, and it helped me realize why my parents don't feel like parents, but more like brothe or slash sister. Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents Thank you for that book recommendation, just looked it up. Fantastic book. It was a hard read because at times it felt like the author was staring into my effing soul, and at other times it made me realize where I was sorely lacking. Either way this book was important for me, and I'm glad I read it. It's $10 on Kindle. Just ordered, thank you. The follow-up, Recovering from Emotionally Immature Parents has been great, I'm on my second listen, this time with intense focus and working through the exercises. I spend about 30 minutes with it every morning and have been feeling much more self-assured and as though I am healing through the process. I particularly like the audiobook as it feels like a kind voice of reassurance as I work through processing my childhood to become a healthier adult. Silly question, but how does it differ from the first book? I adored the first one but just kind of assumed the second one would basically be a rehash of the first. Yes, 100%, recommended. I have it as an audiobook which makes it kind of therapeutic to listen to. Comment saved. Thank you. How about a book for emotionally voided parents? That's addressed in the book actually. It's a form of emotional immaturity. This book works for those two. Just makes the title a little long to include it. Do you have a recommendation for a book for parents who are struggling with the fact that their child is an adult? I am 30 years old and my mother still does many things in trying to treat me like I'm still 16, and she has mentioned she struggles with how to act or treat me now. Thank you so much for this recommendation. I read that book last year. It really helped me realize that your parent can just be selfish and immature and there's nothing you can do about it. It also helped me realize there's nothing wrong with not trying to make the relationship work all by yourself. Just downloaded it. Thank you for the recommendation. Also forgive for good. It was the first self-guided healing book that made sense to me. I read, annotated, and reread it to process years of childhood trauma and parental abuse. It's a worthwhile read, for sure. I agree. I read it earlier this year and it was so incredibly validating. It's an amazing book. This book really changed my GF's life and helped her process her relationship with her toxic parents a ton. Highly recommend. I remember and it was so sad and broke my heart. It was also so mind-blowing. I don't know if it worked out entirely but it's great to hear an update. A second one would be great too. I think it's good you're getting therapy personally just for your peace of mind. That's the most important. I do hope you can develop some sort of relationship beyond working with your parents. But the past does bear weight in the present and future and it's unrealistic to just forget. Your feelings are very valid and it's good you're working through it for yourself. Hopefully, everything works out and they don't endanger any more of your emotional stability. The fact you're trying says a lot of good about you and your parents' response says a lot less to me. Emo parents who really care and probably aren't our slash raised by narcissists wouldn't have this reaction and do everything to make amends for their mishandling of the past. While I understand they were in a bind they still handled their situation wrong and poorly in my opinion. Good luck. Stay safe. Hope college slash university works out well for you. Web link. Reddit link. I agree. 
Your parents should be bending over backwards to rebuild the relationship with you, especially on your terms. Don't forget you have the power here. Don't let them try and gaslight you into believing their past behavior means nothing and that starting fresh is possible. You need to heal from the wounds they inflicted first and before rebuilding a true relationship with them. I wish you the best of luck in your future. Wow, just read your original post. I can't think how anyone could rationalize that. Especially you. I don't know you but I love you. Be kind to yourself. I'm sorry that happened to you even if that sounds meaningless. Much love. Lots of people want you to be okay. Agree with this 100%. I remember your original post and I'm so impressed with how you're handling this. You are showing compassion and generosity here to people you owe nothing to, but also holding clear and firm boundaries. Wishing you all the luck with this situation and hope this works out well for you. Seeing that how her parents behave, it's kind of hard to think they are willing to change to be honest. Congrats original poster, sounds like you are setting clear expectations and boundaries. Internet high five. Honestly I'm proud of original poster because she handled the situation in such a mature way. I definitely would not have been like that at 19. Yeah, at 19 I would have gleefully burned all my bridges with them. Glances behind me at several still smoldering bridges. Yeah, honestly same. Another thing is they should apologize or tell the truth to the other family members that tried to harass you about them. Pay attention to what any of those people say because if they try to tell them something different to still make you look bad that will show they have not changed at all. But if they are honest to other family members about the mistake they made themselves then I think it's worth pursuing a relationship with them but keep your boundaries up. I agree. The parents didn't even let her have quality time with her sister, or even get closure. I can't imagine any parent doing that. It's abuse. I remember this post and I remember crying and being so angry. I remember commenting something that said tell them off or whatever. My heart hurts so much when I read it and it still hurts when I read this post. I cried again today and I really wish you well in life. I hope one day it won't hurt you and I hope you be the happiest person in the world. I am sorry you had to go through this and I really really wish you well. Original poster please be happy. You are very mature and forgiving even. I don't think I would have been able to so objective and even see them let alone give them a chance. You are so strong. Please take care. All the best with everything. I've been wondering how you've been going over the last month and I'm honestly glad that you're seeing a counselor and good on you for setting boundaries so to speak with your parents. There's no time limit when it comes to grieving and everyone grieves differently. As you said you lost your family years ago they don't have to like what you said, however had to accept it as it was the truth and the truth hurts. As I said in my last comment on your first post take your time to grieve for your sister and lost relationships and do what's best for you. At the end of the day your feelings matter and hopefully these boundaries will help you in moving forward. In regards to the letter I'm glad that you were able to tell them how you feel, what they missed and how you were treated, I do hope that writing and sending that letter was therapeutic for you and allowed you to feel some relief at being able to let them know what they did to you. Congratulations on your first semester at college, I wish you all the best for the future. Remember you're a strong young woman and the world in yours. Good luck. I'm happy things are going alright but I'd still be wary if I were you. They seem to have begrudgingly accepted your condition. I'd approach every interaction with them with caution. They may not have changed. They may think they're entitled to parent you. The second that happens you're gone. No second chances. The ball's in their court now they have to prove to you beyond any doubt they love and care for you and aren't just trying to replace Abby. Remember it's okay to forgive them that's for yourself. But you will never forget what they did. Thanks for the update. So glad you're in therapy. It's so helpful. A side note. Now that you're 18 no one should try and parent you per se. Let me explain. You're an adult which means whoever you do view as your parents no longer has authority over you. The relationship should shift from child and parent to that of equals. Yes you are to respect and honor them but they no longer have authority over you. I hope that makes sense. Edit. Your relationship with your parents changes from child to parent to adult to adult. The roles change from dependency and authority to mutuality. 
While you are to respect and care for your mother and father, you are no longer under their protection and tutelage. Children are to obey parents, while adult children are to love and honor them. Therefore, situations will occur where you need to make decisions and set boundaries with family with which they may not agree. Wanted to add this. This explains what I was trying to say above. But applies to whomever you view as parents. I agree with you that no one should try to parent her at her age, and I do hope she has an adult-to-adult -adult relationship with her grandparents. But given the entitled nature of her parents, I think it's good that she mentioned them. Citing her grandparents as the authority figure undermined any possibilities of her parents taking up that role. They need to know they have no power here. They'll have to work to earn any respect. A side note. Now that you're 18 no one should try and parent you. Parenting has more to it than just telling someone to clean their room and do their homework. If graduation has limited seating, the seats should go to actual parents, not bio parents. Guess who is going to walk original poster down the aisle at her wedding? Grandpa. Guess who is going to be the first ones called when original poster gets engaged or has a kid? Grandparents. Assuming marriage and parenthood are goals for up. When original poster has a problem, she's not going to turn to Abby's parents for help or advice. That is all an aspect of the parent slash child relationship that continues into adulthood. That's nice but if you check most top posts on a regular basis, virtually no one thinks this if it affects the children negatively. Like if the parents not give them money for college. As long as treating the adult children in the story is to the benefit of the children, it's important for parents to treat them like adults. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.